What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom and Eric G. Tabor. We're here on Thursday talking about the NBA slate. Um, we're going to talk. Uh, I'll, I'll talk live on the, the for the NFL later. And uh, Sheets, some close calls last night. Let's just t- talk to us a little bit about it. And you got the tennis win also on top of it, which I just see just popped up for the. For the I did. The I did. I got the tennis win. Uh, the tennis win overnight. Uh, and but the but the fun was the uh, what was it the mega the mega eights. Yeah, so the mega eights last night. See, my son just came back from he was away, and I came came back and said, like, "What's going on?" I had it up on the board, and you know, I played you know the early games, but nonetheless, I was in first place, and this was big. This was one hundred fifty thousand, like for first. Yeah, and and it was there. It was listen. If you if you if you judge time in first place, I was the big winner last night. Yeah, you were in first place literally for like five hours. Yeah, most time. Like average cash amount for, I mean, I was, I was like in first after like 20 minutes. I mean, like, yeah. like right off the bat. And then, and well, part of it was like, I played what I thought was going to be the two chalky Josh Richardson who ended up 6% owned. Um, yeah, nice. and, yeah. and, and then you had, um, you had Val and Shunas who had like a total snowflake and just, just decided to get like a hundred rebounds in the second half and then decided to get extra run in the fourth quarter because they were up 30 but they let Houston back in the game. Yeah. So he was going to be dead. And then he came back. Um, I mean, they all these guys are just kind of good enough. And Levert was, was the Levert, man. I didn't think he'd be so, so low owned. I mean, but the way you were talking about him, I I figured like everybody was going to be on him, you know, and, and nobody played him at 10%. And then I'm sitting here with with Harden at halftime. He only had 30 or whatever it is. Okay. Whatever it is, I'll double. That's fine. I'll double that. He'll get 60. And then he basically didn't make a shot or do anything the whole second half. Yeah. And then yeah. I lucked into an overtime with him where he spent five minutes in overtime doing nothing. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. So I'm like, oh, great. And then uh, free throws and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, I can pretend that I really thought I had a chance, but I really didn't. I mean, I was looking what was coming behind me. There was just, there's just way too much. I and mean, yeah, listen, I don't, I keep, I don't mean to whine, you know, but. I have all these, listen, I'm fighting all these experts with like 20 lineups. You know what I mean? It's just tough. It's just tough. I mean, it's, and it's 332 on, on a slate with like some good value. It's, it's just not going to be, it's just not going to be enough, you know? But, yeah. But, but it hung in there for a long time. And I'll tell you this to give you an example. Like I ended up losing by like 10, 15, 12 points, whatever it is. Like I ran so hot to, with the guys I was fading to even to hold them off for as long as I did. And I'll tell you this, not because I, this is what sucks about DFS, like and gambling in general. You forget that these are human beings sometimes, and I mean you don't forget, but you see people sometimes like rooting for injuries and stuff like that when it like helps you helps you. And I'm sitting there and I was fading like all kinds of combinations: shoot Darren Reeves, shoot Darren this, shoot Darren that, and he was going crazy. And then he got he got fouled with like three minutes to go in the game, right at a pivot point where if he scored like two more points, then the floodgates would open. I'd go from like first to like hundredth or whatever it is, and on the play, he freaking totally twisted his ankle, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's like laying on the ground. And part of me is like, I don't I hope you're not hurt that bad, but maybe just enough to get pulled out of the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right, right. But you know, he's, he's, he's a, all these guys are animals. You know, he got up and made the free throws at like ten more points or something like that. You know, whatever. But yeah. um, but yeah, I mean, pretty good. And uh, you know, I basically made money across the board yesterday um, uh, on DraftKings. Little, not as much, not as well as you did on Fanduel, but I, I made money on Fanduel, and uh, and then the tennis thing overnight. Uh, here's one good. Here's here's one uh, one thing I want to tell you about the tennis real quick. Mm-hmm. And we gotta we gotta call we have put a name to this. So this is so I went to sleep and 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 I you know I needed a win, but I needed it by a certain amount. And you'll see that I won literally by point one fantasy points. That's wild. Right? And and. I, I don't know what to call this, but I'm going to put a name to this. You'll notice that the three guys I beat by point one were freaking triple duped. And that always like puts a big smile on my face. You yeah. know what I mean? When, and it's, 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 there's got to be some kind of theorem that like that the, the, the non duped lineup, when it comes down to point one, is always going to win. Just, just on, just for DFS karma. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> something like that. I and, hope it goes that way. I I hate the dupe lineup thing. It drives me. In nuts. any case, in, in any case, um, you know, uh, that was that's good to get off a good start on the like second or third tennis slate on the board. And no, we'll, we'll call that a little advertisement. You know, uh, yeah. it hasn't seemed that way in the past three weeks because a lot of these ancillary sports have been kind of, uh, kind of been off. 
But listen, a true DFS, I mean, there's just uh, in the big sports. We got M- MMA and 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 golf and auto racing and Hello, legal legends, legal legends and tennis and 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 listen, you know, I I posted this mm-hmm. when I when I tweeted these results. Listen, the, the, this paid just as much as that other that NBA thing. And I'll tell you this, listen, there there's some people that are okay at tennis, but one thing about these ancillary sports, you got you got you're you are not fighting like the same type of fights. You know what I mean? Like right. you're not fighting 37 entries of people with freaking sick algorithms before staying up all night late swapping the NBA. You know, like that's it's just a different type of battle when you're playing guys that are just kind of into tennis, they play a little DFS, they put their lineups in, everybody goes to sleep and wakes up and see how they did. You know what I mean? It's just it's just a little, it's a little bit different feel. Um, so uh not to say anything bad about the skip bitter. I mean, these guys are really, really good, but but I, I like diversifying my stuff around um, among yeah. these smaller sports, you know. So and we have we have a little of all that. We have DFS Chan, who's a freaking wizard at, mm-hmm. at both soccer and uh League of Legends. So mm-hmm. uh, if NBA is not your thing, I'm telling you we can keep you guys really entertained with a lot of, <laughs> a lot, of a lot of stuff. Absolutely, man. And I, I appreciate that you do all that stuff. And also like, it's great. And you, you said something about me a couple of weeks ago, and it was very true then, maybe a little less true right now. Um, but you're like, you know, so you go through periods when you're, when you're, when you're hitting on things and you're seeing the ball well, as, as you say. Yeah. And, and I, th- I think you're, I think I've seen the board well. I think that you're, uh, you're, you're in that zone right now. So I would take a, I would take a lot of it, uh, pay a lot of attention to what she's just saying for any of these sports. And uh, with that, I think we should get into this late today. I was disappointed. Obviously, we were all pulling for you last night. Um, but it, I think you had a little more of a chance than you thought. Maybe not to win, but to, like, top three or four. Um, yeah. It just was the shrewd air thing. He doesn't have to get 50. You know what I mean? He gets 40 yeah. and you, you beat you know another seven guys, you know? And, uh, that's true. So, anyway, but let's get into it tonight. Uh, it, you know, it's a little four-gamer after the, the monster slate last night, which... You know, I think we're we're switching places here, Sheets. I'm doing better on the smaller slates, I feel like, and I feel like you do better on the big ones lately. Well, um, as long as long as I like can say, as long as, long as somebody's winning, it's, it's exactly. fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So what do we got? We got well, we have three kind of uninspiring totals, and it's so funny to say that because, I mean, now now if it's not two forty, we think it's like low. You know, it's like it's uh. Right. And we're in a very weird era where at the average score, the average NBA, the average, if you combine all the teams, the average score for an NBA game, the average team average well, is 13. To that, point, we'll, was that? We'll to, the, to that point, we'll get this. Literally all three of these implied totals are exactly 230. Yep. Which is, They're basically all the same exact totals and in very different ways. So yeah, definitely right. something. So let's, so let's, uh, and the other thing I'll notice is that uh, the over um, over, overall slate, I only have one guy that's at least quick early popping at, at more than six X. Um, and we'll get to that soon. Yep. So it'll be, uh, yeah, be interesting to see what happens. So what do we yeah. got here? Mem- Mem- Memphis, Orlando. Yeah. Memphis won very easy, like easily last night, but at the same time they did play some minutes. So I'm curious what they do with Desmond Bain here on a back to back. I'm curious what they do with Steven Adams on a back to back. If Brandon Clark is back. Um, I, I think that's, you know, we're, we're going to get information before the game starts, obviously, but uh, I wouldn't surprise me. Memphis is super deep that if they, if they sat anybody here, um, but assuming that everyone's a go, it's, 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 you know, Steven Adams, it makes sense. I, I played a lot of Bane last night on FanDuel. Oh, nice. And he was, he was really good. Um, would have been really, really good if he got more than 26 minutes because they weren't up by 35 um so i i i like the i mean if bain plays and is a go i am interested in in bain and i'm interested in adams as the first two and then jaw like for raw points i think this is a really really good matchup for him it is a back-to-back um i think that he's like everyone else though he sees all the everybody putting up these these video game numbers and probably wants to get in one game like that of his own so i can be talked into a little bit of jaw or or jaron jackson jr but it's really Hard to analyze this one without knowing who's going to play yet for Memphis on the back-to-back because of the, uh, the you know, the, the depth of the team and there's the, the lack of need to really push push these guys. So I, I am curious if we get some late news that with Memphis or news later today that tells us uh, maybe we need to do something else. And on the other side, you have guys who are, you know, Orlando uh, played a good game last night with their nine guys and it worked out well. Another, another good decision I made was the Terrence Ross at less than 1%. 
33 fantasy points. Oh, you won, you won, you won that, uh, that, that argument. I like yeah, so and I, I forgot I about that. Yeah. Too, and he had a couple steals. So he had like 33 over there. So that was, yeah. that was, that was a nice one to have. He was in one of the, the one that I had that almost uh, had a chance at the, at winning the big one. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's still, you know, with Wagner back, it's probably, it's, it, it's probably like a little, it's a little less interesting than it was yesterday. Um, I think Bancaro is still fine again, back to back. So just keep in mind, keep that in mind. Wendell Carter coming back off the injury feels like they could limit him. Um, Cole Anthony has been uninspiring, but I think that he is the guy who will project the best. So it's, it's, it is a, it's another one of those situations where do we know if we, we don't, we still don't know about Jalen Suggs and then we don't know if they're going to sit somebody on the back to back. So may, maybe they won't because like what you said, they're they're you know, because the suspensions and everything, they tried to gear it up. So they all have enough bodies. But I would be inclined to to, to take a shot on Wagner, uh, assuming that he plays. And uh, my next favorite would be, uh, is he not in the lineup today? Did I miss something? So is, is it, I don't have Cole Anthony in the in the lineup at all. Um, maybe you need to double check on that one because I, 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 have, I, have him, I haven't projected. He's not in NBA.com's available players, and he's not on Roto Grinders' available players. He's in he's in DraftKings' available players, and he's. But that doesn't matter though, because they they are, they have everybody in there. So is Anthony will be suspended. No, I don't know why is he like, traded or something. So is, is this well? This might be the game he's suspended. I, I I I'll have to double check on that one later because it's it is weird that he literally doesn't have a name. Does um, Anthony will serve a suspension? Friday? No, no, he's he's. He'll be able to play Wednesday against the Thunder. No, he's. No, that was no. last week. No, I know he's. Uh, I, yeah. I, I don't think there's anything. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I do think there's something because he's literally not even in the player pool. On well, he's not in the. You know what? Let's, let's 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 you know let's let's have some fun here. Let's go into Twitter. Let's see if there's any. If there's anything? Decent. It's probably. That's really uh, weird. Uh, um, no, it's, it's start calling it. Nah, I got literally nothing. Yeah, well, we'll see later on. Um, it is interesting to me. I, I you don't usually see players who are left out of player pools in lineups. Um, so I'm I'm gonna wonder what's happening with that one. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, we'll revisit it later. Anyway, assuming that he does play, I, I think that he's very reasonable at 5100. The it's just it's it, again though no, we're, we're we're just really guessing here who the magic go with on the back to back. Um, they, they they could just play every they could play all the guys they have, which they now have 11 bodies available. Um, and it's certainly less less desirable than last night. Also, there is always blowout risk, but I think that uh, I think Wagner at first look, Wagner, uh, Bancaro, and assuming that he's available. Uh, Cole Anthony would be my three favorites. How about you? Yeah, I I, uh, I am not seeing too much value here, except except for maybe Wendell Carter mm -hmm. for Orlando. So he looks like my favorite player over there. And for Memphis, um, I'm taking a shot with Ja. I mean, if he plays, I I, I got no problem with that. Um, so I, I it's fortunately, like you said, none of these guys had to play that much like yesterday. Yep. They blitz them. So I like John a slate without too much as far as, as upside, you know, as, well, listen, there's, there's, I shouldn't say that there's Luca and, and Jokic, right. But uh, I think John's reasonable. And I, I like your idea. Um, uh, I like your idea of, of the video game uh, narrative. <laughs> it's yeah. like everybody kind of wants to get in on it. Uh, it leads me to a question. Uh, uh, do I know that NFL players are very cognizant of fantasy, you know, mm -hmm. and their fantasy points. Do the NBA people, players know about fantasy, like an NBA I, fantasy point? I, I don't think they care too much about the fantasy part of it. No. But I think that it's just the, the the all the attention being paid to Luca and then to Donovan Mitchell and then to Giannis for a million forty twenty games. It's it, and the other guys tend to tend to keep trying to outperform them. We also are at that point where some guys sitting you know, this time of year and stuff is going to open up even more usage, but, but like, we'll get into it with Luca in just a second, because I, I do think that you want to try and get ahead on these runs when these players are on them, especially when their teams are winning. Like, you know what I mean? If Luca was putting out these numbers, this team had lost all three games. I wouldn't count on him to keep controlling things the way he has been, but I, they, they've been winning these games and he's, you know, been unbelievable. So I, I, I want to keep 
trying to start to get the stars, the studs in as much as possible. The problem is there's literally like 20 guys we could name as studs who could put up these kind of video game numbers uh, in today's NBA. But let's talk about the Boston uh, Dallas game because this is a big game. Boston has, you know, really looked shaky uh, a, a lot of the time lately. They've had a had a few good moments and bouncing back, and then they then they then they sort of teeter out the other way. I think this game matters a lot to them, and I think this is a uh, a game where everybody on their side, while they don't project particularly well, are certainly interesting to me. Uh, no, no one more so than than the the, the uncomfortably high price of Tatum. Um, but Derek, but Derek White, Marcus Smart, uh, the other two obvious ones. And then I think Brogdon could see some extra run tonight. So I, I, I'm going to probably, you know, force in some of these, these less than optimal plays because of, of the situation Dallas, Dallas doesn't play fast, all that stuff. But I, I think that Marcus Smart especially, um, stands out at price wise, but I think Tatum is going to, going to pick things up again. Also, I think that he'll get up for the, you know, the, the MVP narrative type of thing. Um, and then I love, I, I, you know, look, I'm, I'm going to just, no matter what the slate, no matter what value we have, I'm going to try to make sure I'm overweight on Luca until he's at least 13 K. Um, and then, or until this stops, because right now I just can't seem to, I can't, I can't quit him. Um, and, and other guys may be in play tonight who, who we don't usually play on big slates because like you said, we don't have value. Reggie Bullock is going to play 30 plus minutes, probably 35 minutes. Um, I, I don't mind if you want to take a, a weird shot there. Um, that, that would be the, the, I guess the, the, the one cheap guy who I think has, has the most interest here, but, uh, I think hard, if you're not playing Luca, or even if you are Hardaway, Dinwiddie are completely fairly priced and Christian Wood uh, certainly has the ceiling to get there. So I, I do like these Dallas guys. I imagine that I'll have at least one on every team. Luca will be the main one. And I'm going to force in some of the Boston, uh, the Boston, uh, studs if I can, if I can get there. I tend to not play guys like Reggie Bullock. Um, but it's a four gamer, but on a four game slate. Yeah. That's what I was going to say is that, uh, sometimes you just kind of fall into those. I remember I cashed pretty good on a, on a, on a slate like this, um, a couple, you know, a couple of weeks ago or whatever with the guy that I never play, like, uh, like Dorian Finney Smith, like, you know what I mean? Like sometimes right. you just need them. You sometimes you need, you need anything, you know what I mean? And, 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 and Bullock is, you know, at 3,800, you, you know, on a slate like – is that what he is, 38, something like that? He's 35. 35, I mean, that's – you don't want – you don't need to be that greedy. Like, on this, on this slate, you're going to – you're going to yeah. 300, 300 points probably wins, you know, so – or it comes close. So, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm with you. I'm with you on stuff like that tonight. Like, if we – you know, we talked about this yesterday. Listen, we, we talked – I talked about this with you from the first day I ever spoke to you at DFS. Like, the, the question is uh, – I remember I asked you this. I'm like – What's 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 better, right? Like like what's better, like the the twelve k guy pair with the three k guy or two seventy five hundreds? You know what's the best way to spend fifteen thousand dollars? And that's always like the, the it's always an interesting question, right? Um, the stars versus scrubs versus the middling built builds, and obviously the, the answer is what you said to me before is it just depends, right? It depends yeah. on the slate, depends on who, it depends on whatever. But on these small slates, when you have guys with like literally hundred point ceilings, you know. Um, like Jokic and Donk and, and Luca, I mean, unless you could have like these incredible 7,800, 7,600 hour plays, maybe you should just play like 12, six plus the three. And it's weird that you might, if you play Reggie Bullock and he scores eight fantasy points, that could be plenty. You know what I mean? Like right. when you pair that with, with the 90 of Luca, you know? So I, I think that's, that's an interesting take uh, on, mm -hmm. on, a, on a slate like this. So I'm, I'm pretty much in agreement with you. Um, uh, and aside from that, I mean, I don't have much to add, honestly. Yeah, this is not, you know, it, it, it's it's a game. I would say I would say that it seems fishy. It looks like looks like a pretty high total for these teams. But Boston, like you said, Boston, the Celtics, I mean, Boston Boston is like the highest scoring team in the league, though. Like they, they well, yeah, that's what you kept. Their, their defense is not is not what people think it is. Yeah, like it, it can be, and, and by the way, it's a, it's something we have to adjust to in the modern age of NBA. The best defensive teams tend to give up the most points. Like it's, it's the same thing that we dealt with with the Bucks, who have been statistically the best defensive team. But their way of doing it was, hey, let's get as let's get as many possessions on the court as possible because we know we're better on both ends than everybody else's. Um, which uh, which by the way, so so let's shift over to the uh, the Utah Houston game. Utah always a really really tough team to peg. Um, they have a lot of guys who who are going to look like reasonable plays. Like they've got, I mean, the number of guys who are going to be owned on their team is kind of crazy tonight. 
Uh, I will say that, again, by the end of the day, in a good matchup for Vanderbilt, I expect him to be the one who gets sort of forgotten about, as he always does. And he was really good the other night, almost really, really good. But he was really good for me the other night. I think he's interesting at 5,100 as a pivot off of what will be a semi-chalky Olenek. But I do like Olenek for what it's worth. Um, and then you get into Conley and uh, Clarkson as the as the main plays. I think that if I had to pick, I, I like the idea of taking Vanderbilt at what I think is going to be lower ownership than Olenek. I like the idea of, of getting some Conley, but I, I mean, they're playing the Keel Alexander Walker minutes and it's another one of those pieces of, of, you know, quote, un, you know, awkward value. Um, but, they, but, you know, he's getting, he's getting minutes here and there. I, I think I would probably skip that one and play Bullock who at least is going to be on the court for minutes. Cause Alexander Walker has like a tough path with all these guys available. Um, but if, you know, if you're not playing one of Conley or Clarkson, you should probably be playing Beasley. If you're not, you know, if you're not playing, it, it, I think you're playing one of those guards from, uh, from, from Utah as a priority. I think Conley is probably my favorite with the price considered, but Beasley has probably a, a better ceiling point per dollar and Clarkson has the better overall ceiling. I don't think I'm going to get to market it at 9k, but I do like the Vanderbilt and Olenek, but I'll play one of them. And it's probably going to be Vanderbilt more for me. Uh, large field play would be Walker Kessler. That's what I've got on the Utah side. And on the Houston side, it's the same, you know, it's, it's KJ Martin as the best value on the slate because no Eric Gordon, um, the 3,500 is really helpful. Jabari Smith, I, another, another nice play I made last night, 5% on, or not, I think it was 9% on FanDuel, but he, he put up 39 fantasy points, um, and, and I think that we, we you know, that this feels like an even better spot for him, uh, all things considered, because you don't have to worry about, you know, they the, the have KJ Martin, who's a pretty low, low usage guy in there. Also, um, Tari Eason is the other one who you use for value. But I, I'm, I'm in I'm in on these guys. And they just Shangun only played 21 minutes on the first side of the back to back. So I'm open to using him. He played really well uh, from a fantasy perspective, just got eaten up inside. But um, but I, I, I think all of these guys are firmly in play. And then I think Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green. And I like Kevin Porter Jr. a little better than I like Jalen Green tonight. Yeah, so Houston is the team that shows up as the better values on the slate. Um, and I was wondering why and, and why the K.J. Martin popped, and I guess you just answered me, right, that, that, that Eric Gordon is out. So I have, a, I have a couple of takes on this, actually. First of all, you know, the Utah games are always kind of, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily fantasy-friendly, but they're certainly point-friendly, right? Mm -hmm. um, and listen, one of the things that you, you get a sense of, and, and I talk about this with other people, like whether you're, there, there's some types of people that just play DFS and they just don't ever watch the games, right? And there's some people that actually like watching and getting observations. One of the things when you do have a sweat, you know, and you're anti-sweating or sweating like all, all these other guys, especially when you're anti-sweating other guys, you know, because you're always watching the guys that you're rooting for, but when you have a sweat, you're really, you know, watching everybody, right? Yeah. Um, and you get, you get a sense of who some of these guys are when you're, when you're stiff and you're rooting against them, you know, both for fantasy perspective. Like here's an example. It was a weird example, but back, back in the eighties, back when I, you know, was really, you know, into sports and following basketball and I was younger and all that stuff. Like whenever I had, was betting against like Larry Bird, like literally whenever he touched the ball, like I was petrified. You know what I mean? Like just, and then, then a little later on, like same things with Jordan. Like if you faded Jordan, and it was like, you're down the street, you touch the ball, you just like literally like had this, you just had, you felt like you had just no chance. Okay. And when you're fair, when you're like, it reminds me of when I had to like, when you have to anti sweat Lillard sometimes when Lillard was in that freaking zone, you know? So I was, I bring all this up because one of the guys that I had to anti sweat in like at that, that first frame of games was this Jabari Smith Jr. You know, and I, I really didn't know he was. I mean, you told me a couple of times who he was, whatever. Dude, this guy's a freaking pain in the ass to sweat to anti-sweat like this guy's this guy puts the fear of god into you like 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 you can tell that this guy can put up like 70 one day you know like i don't yeah. know oh yeah 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 he's gonna get i just know he has that you know i don't even know if he's a good basketball player he'll make he'll make 10 all-star teams but but yeah but i mean this guy this guy is freaking action you know what i mean this guy's yeah. like he's action and he ain't shot okay yeah. um and i had never seen him play and so it was a good good experience for me and I'll play him tonight. <laughs> that's that's not a problem. Um, yeah. the, the other guy who also you want another guy who ain't shy. Another guy that you mentioned was Jalen Green. Like that guy ain't shy. Okay. Yeah. And, and Kevin Porter Jr. certainly ain't shy. So so you have three ain't shy guys. So I think I think I figure out what I'm probably supposed to do. 
is play those guys and don't play KJ Martin. Like, like you say, KJ Martin is kind of like a low usage guy. He's definitely his rating is a good value, but he seems to me like on a small slate to be a guy that ends up 50% owned that gets 12 fantasy points. Um, I, I just, you know, and, and, and so that's, that's again, like my, my what 12 55 PM uh, instinct on what to do with this. So that's, that's, that's my idea. Um, and on the Utah side, I mean, the usual, you know, Malik Beasley makes sense. Olenek makes sense. Uh, Clarkson makes sense. So I would probably stack this game up, you know, and, and even if it means just playing some of the value guys and then play, you know, one of the studs like Luca or, or, or Jokic or whatever, I do think that you should want to play these Houston's, but I think that I, I really do think the key to this is to, is to is to is to not play KJ Martin and play the high usage ain't shy guys. That's that's my my initial instinct. Though. Yeah, I, I will play as of right now without the other value. I, there's zero percent chance that I'm not playing KJ Martin or Tari Eason. Um, like they're definitely it's automatic for me. One of those guys is in my lineups. Um, and and I, and I, and low usage, sure, whatever. But like. You can't game log watch because the situation is different every time Eric Gordon doesn't play. And okay. one of these guys tends to get, you know, right around 20 every time, which is plenty good enough on this particular slate. Okay. So even if he only gets 15, I'm not even worried about it. Like I, I really think that and, and you've got upside of 35 plus. Like it's it's not like you can't 10x his price. Um he's KJ Martin is is low usage, but he's incredibly active. And he's okay. higher usage than guys like he played last night on a full slate. Like uh, what's his name? Right. Uh, Josh Richardson. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Everything. Um, so I, I, I'm in on the, the the Martin, but I have no problem with Tari to fading him and playing Tari Eason instead. If you have, if that's the way you want to go, because okay. it's going to be one of those guys, in my opinion, uh, most of the time here. The only problem is they do mix in a little bit of this Ty Ty Washington. They mix in a little bit of these other guys. So maybe. Maybe you could consider making some lineups without them. But as of right now, just because I need the value, I'm going to try to force those guys in, uh, one of those guys in, no matter what. I don't care the ownership or anything. They just allow me to do what I want elsewhere a little bit too well. Okay. Anyway, um, we can move on to the to the, the Clippers and, uh, and and Denver. Why don't you start this one off, Sheets? Yep. So uh, all right, let's let's start with the centers, right? We'll start with, uh, with, with Jokic, who, you know, just this – just as much, whatever. He's got upside similar to, to Luca. Um, and uh that will be a little lower owned than Luca, I imagine. Um, it won't be low owned, but he'll be lower owned. I think people will be able to get one of these two studs in, and I think they'll do that. Um, so I think he's perfectly good play. And then I'll, I'll go to the uh couple of clippers. So we'll go with uh Paul George, a main's under 9k. Uh, I think that's perfectly, perfectly good. And then uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Zubac, uh, the center for the Clippers. Uh, I imagine they're gonna they're gonna prefer him be in the game as much as he can mm-hmm. handle, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, let me ask you a question: uh, Are they gonna give Mister Mister Brown any minutes tonight? No. So I I, I think that they're. Let's just take a quick look at the the Zubac, you know, game log because. I want to just take a quick look and see what happened the last time these teams played. I'm pretty sure it wasn't that long ago. The The natural thing you'd think is, okay, we'll play Zubac um, as many minutes as we can and all that stuff. Um, but I think – actually, they haven't played this year. That's weird. Uh, but the thing is that, that – I don't know. They uh, – there is oh, – they, 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 they played on November – they played November 25th. Oh, they did. Okay. And he played 29 minutes. Okay. That's a pretty good number for minutes for me. Um, uh, where was that? Oh, there it is. Yeah. He played 29 minutes. He scored 16 fantasy he didn't, points. He didn't do much. We followed um, it up with followed it up with 76 fantasy points the next game. Yeah, the next game against Charlotte. Yeah, of course. By the way, no, Indiana, 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 Indiana. Oh, Indiana was what we scored 76 against. Yeah. Um anyway, Zubach, um, yeah, I like Zubac. Uh, I I I don't know that you'll get any minutes at all from Moses Brown, but no, I don't. But uh, you know, as a long shot, like if you're going to play one lottery lineup or something, one in one of your lotteries. No, wait, so wait, wait. Let's just let's, okay. So Zubac, play, he's not playing thirty, you know, forty eight minutes, right? So so 
So let's say he plays 30 minutes. They just go small. The yeah, they'll is, go small against Jokic, really? That, that, that's the kind of team they go small against. They okay. did this in the playoffs, too. Okay. Because Jokic, because Jokic uh, coming out, they have the problem on off, on defense. And then you get Marcus Morris, which, by the way, oh, had the, the, the or ejection and suspension last year by pushing Jokic out of bounds. There's a weird little, like, like I don't know what the narrative is, but there is something there with those two. Um, and, and, and Jokic in general, the funny part about him with his size is, like, he doesn't struggle against anybody, but he tends to the, the smaller, more athletic players tend to give him just as much or a hard time or a harder time than some of the big guys. He doesn't have any trouble with the bigs, but it seems like doubling Jokic is the wrong thing. So it's kind of tricky. But as of, so, so as of right now, I do think Zubac is a really strong play. And then if you're not doing what I'm doing with the other games where I'm trying to force in Luca and, and I like the idea of trying to force in one of the Boston runbacks along with the Houston value, um, then maybe you can play you know, the, the, the Jokic Kawhi or Jokic Paul George, both of which I think are completely fine. Just not what I'm getting to in my, in my early builds. And I'm not really getting to anyone else from the Clippers outside of Zubac, um, except for considering those two. And on Denver's side, I, I think that the, the thing may be to maybe to play these other guys. I think, I think a low owned Michael Porter Jr. is an interesting play. And I think that uh, Jamal Murray is interesting when all three of them, when all, when those guys are healthy, um, I'm going to just side with Luka as a better spend up than Jokic. But look, man, we know that these guys both could put up 80 and I'd look stupid. And, and we might get value later today that might make us make it possible to play both of them, which I think would be a pretty good idea because you're probably getting 150 from those two guys a good portion of the time here. But I like the idea of playing Murray or Porter instead um, on this particular slate. Yep. And uh, l- large field stuff, uh, Bruce Brown, Aaron Gordon, Bones Highland, and KCP are all are all in play for large field stuff. There's it's 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 it's, it's you know it's always who's playing well for Denver when it comes to that little grouping of players, um, except for Aaron Gordon. But Bruce Brown, KCP, Bones Highland, one of those guys tends to get there. And I think on this kind of slate, trying to pick the right one makes some sense. For me, that would be probably Bones followed by Brown followed by KCP. But it's tough. It's a slate where we're probably going to know a lot more at six Eastern than we do right now, because there is some back to backs that we have to deal with. But the priorities for me are going to be Luca, one of Adams or Triple J for for Memphis, Orlando, one or two, whether it's Wagner, uh, well, Wagner, ben- Bancaro being my favorite, along with Cole Anthony, if he plays. Um, and then your value guys are Martin or Eason with Bullock and then Jabari is too cheap, along with Zubac. So. That's sort of the way that the builds are going for me today. But I don't mind the idea if you want to just throw it out the window and stack up Houston, Utah, like you've got on your board. That, yeah, that's, well, that's, well and you, you, know, you know what I'm rooting for. I'm rooting for, I'm rooting for no value. I'm, I'll, 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 this, I'll, I'll take a sheet slate. Uh, I'll, I'll take a shot. I'll take a shot okay. at, at, at 296. You know what I mean? I'll, 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 I'll make it work somehow. All right. Well, I wish you luck on the no value thing happening. <laughs> yeah, I, think, exactly. I, think, I think that the odds are, odds are in my favor on that one. You watch, you watch this. It's eight o'clock. You know, the big the big island game, and then Zubac gets ruled out, and it's Moses Brown season. <laughs> that would, wouldn't that be so tilting? Let's go. Oh, that would be wild. Well, who else? So wait a minute. So when he's when okay, let's let's finish this conversation. So if when when he's out of the game, we'll have like Marcus Morris. You said he'll try to cover him or something, or maybe Kawhi. They'll, 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 they'll probably double with Morris and things like that. Okay. Probably front him, and then double. Okay. But I mean, he, there's a lot of statistics out there that. And the Clippers are a pretty analytical team um, that, that that will tell you that Zupaj, du- I'm sorry, doubling Jokic is is rarely a good idea. <laughs> you know what I think I want to do is yeah, yeah. So I think what I'd like to do, I would like to. You know, sounds great. You know, I'd like to fade Luca. I'd like to fade Jokic. I'd like to be able to just play guys like like the Houston guys I mentioned, and like the the, the highest price guy maybe I'd want to pay play is maybe Paul George. Okay. That's what, so I'd like to do. Um, I, I like that. I, I, I think it's a very, very viable way to build. I, I, I'm totally on board with it. Um, it's not what I'm doing tonight, but I think that's yeah. totally reasonable. I like that. Shape. All right. Anyway, uh, guys, okay. All right. We're going to get out of here. Good luck to everybody. We'll see you at 6 Eastern.